Welcome to FOMA Solutions and in today's tutorial we will be taking differentiation as you can see up there. Now differentiation simply talks about finding the gradient of graphs of functions. Now it's easier to get the gradient of a linear graph but when we have curves such as quadratic curves and cubic curves it will be difficult for us to use the normal approach to find the uh, gradients. So with differentiation, we can get a general what expression which will give us the gradient of any given line or any given function. So from our previous knowledge, we know how to do differentiation by first principle and we're using that in our discussions here. Now, before we can differentiate or find the derivative of a function, at a certain point or within an interval, we must make sure that that point or that interval should be what continuous, or we can find the limit at that point or over that interval. So the condition for differentiation or find the derivative of a function is continuity of that graph or that function. So let's try to see whether some functions are differentiable or not. How do we do that? With our idea of continuity and finding limits, we can determine whether the function is differentiable at certain parts or not. So, with our first principles, whereby we know that we find, let's say, the derivative of a function f of x, which we term as f prime of x, we know that this is given by f of x plus h minus f of x all over h and we take the limit as h is approaching what? 0. I hope we can remember this from the first principle of differentiation. So with this idea in mind, let's try to find out whether this particular function is differentiable at a certain given point or not. Assuming we have f of x equal to the piecewise defined function whereby we have 3x plus 2 when x is less than 1 and also 6 minus x when x is greater or equal to 1. Can we find the derivative of this function at x equals 1 how do we find it out by using continuity and idea of limits so we can see that this gives us the left hand side limit and this gives us the right hand side limit so let's take the left hand side limit of this function and find out what the limit tends to so the limit of the function 3x plus 2 as x approaches 1 from the left. Using the direct substitution method, we are going to have 3 by 1 plus 2, which finally gives us 5. So, using the direct approach, we get the limit to be what? 5. Also, when we want to find the right hand limit, also we have the limit of the function 6 minus x as x is approaching 1 from the right and this one also gives us 6 minus 1 using the direct approach and we are going to get what a value of 5 here but let's try using finding the derivative from the first principle and let's see if the left hand side derivative will be equal to the right hand side derivative. Now you can see that this function is continuous all right, but we have the left hand side limit with the right hand side limit being equal to so this tells us that that part of the function is what continuous. But let's see if it's actually differentiable. So using differentiation from first principle, taking f with a subscript which is minus prime of x that is we want to take the derivative of the function 
from what the left hand side limit so we are going to use the first function here so using f of x plus h minus f of x all over h at the limit of h approaches 0 let's see what happens actually the 0 from what the left hand side so this gives us the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x is 3x plus 2 but we want to find f of h so we replace x with what x plus h which gives us the f of h as 3 into bracket x plus h bracket plus plus 2 all this minus 3 x plus 2 so this is f of x plus h f of x all divided by what h as h approaches 0 what happens next let's try expanding the expression in this relation so opening this we are going to get 3x plus 3h plus 2 minus 3x minus 2 so all divided by h we are still finding the limits as h is approaching 0 now we can simplify the expression here these two cancels out that 2 this 3x cancels out that 3x so you'll be left with 3h all over h as the limit approaches 0 so this h will cancel of that h so our limit as h approaches 0 is what? 3 so our value for differential here from the left is actually 3 now let's find out the differentials when we use the right hand side limit will they be of the same value if yes then it means that function is differentiable at 1 if not that means the function is not differentiable at 1 so taking the left hand side derivative we are still using the first principle so we'll be having the limit as h approaches 0 but here our function is minus x minus 6 or 6 minus x so our h plus x becomes x plus h here all minus 6 minus x as the f of x itself we divide 2 by h as the limit of h approaches to 0 so we can expand the expression at the upper part so that we get 6 minus x minus h minus 6 plus x all over h as the limit of h approaching of 0 so you can further simplify the upper expression this positive 6 cancels out this with negative 6 this positive x also cancels out that negative x so that we are left with negative h over h and this h can cancel out that h so that we are left with negative 1 so the limit as h approaches 0 gives us negative 1 so finding the differentials or the derivative of the left limit we had 3 but finding that one of the right hand side limit we had negative 1 so since the differential at the left hand limit is not equal to the differential at the what, right hand side limit we can say clearly that the function f of x which is defined piecewisely is not differentiable at the point x equals 1 so sometimes we need to verify whether a function will be differentiable at a certain given point so this will always be done if we don't know whether the function is differentiable or not we first have to test to find out if it's differentiable now taking the graph of this function that we just talked about the graph looks this way from the left hand side we have minus 1 here we have 2 here so with this we get the graph this way 
and when you get here it moves down so we can see that treating this part falls on a equals one even though the function is continuous at the value a equals one it forms what a pivot or we can say there is a peak here and at that juncture you can't find the differential when we have a pivot or we call it a king when we have a king or a sharp turn there is no way we can find the differential at what a king or a peak so with that in mind we can say that this particular function is not differentiable okay so with this in mind we'll be using this approach to test for differentiability of functions so to meet again we will talk about some rules that we can use in finding derivative of functions that we actually know that they are what continuous and differentiable to meet again say goodbye